Hey everybody, 100% of Let's Play. Today we're taking a look at Battletech Essentials. Um, this is the new Target exclusive box set uh, which gives you the Solaris 7 mission map, which is, if you've ever like watched, I don't know, like the early, 2000, early aughts wrestling um, or Takeshi's Castle slash Most Extreme Elimination Challenge, it's that with Battle Mechs. It's a hilarious reality TV uh, don't break kayfabe sort of like battle mech combat system with like moving walls uh, crowd of people in the stands that I don't know how they're not just dead from like rogue missiles and flying chunks of armor like I imagine there's got to be at least a hundred stadium deaths every time the battle mechs go out and fight I um, mean I thought this would be fun to do as a let's play now if you want to see the how to play video if you're coming here from having either picked up or, or pre-ordered this box um, and uh, you want to learn like core concepts of the game I did do a how to play video based in this box set which you can watch as well it'll be up here in the cards uh, but this is going to be more of a fun time. Let's see how this works uh, for the, the the stadium thing. It's a it's a way of playing battle like I haven't experienced before, and we're going to do it out of the core box. So this is for more experienced BattleTech players. We're, we're going to play it as like a fast play game though, so no critical hits and no heat tracking because we're going to use just what comes in this box. We're going to use the core um, like record sheets uh, which provide you with a more fast play experience. And I think what I want to demonstrate is BattleTech can be fun and zany as well as being serious space drama. Uh, and this is sort of a, a box that provides that experience. So if you haven't picked this up yet or pre-ordered it, it's uh, available for pre-order from Target right now. And if you're watching this in the future, you may have stumbled upon it on the board game shelf. Uh, I decided to pick it up and hopefully this is useful. So I'm not going to do a lot of explaining the rules. If you want to watch that, check out the how to play. Uh, we're going to dive right in, set up the Slayer 7 Arena and it's moving walls and stuff uh, and throw down this game. So here we are set up to play in Steiner Stadium. This is the Slayer 7 Stadium um, where we're going to have Justin Allard, uh, Justin Chang Allard uh, take on Gray Noten. Um, in a showdown, uh, showing off both the Slayer 7 stable rules and the Steiner Stadium Slayer City map set rules um, that come with uh, like special tokens for both the terrain and some lowered wall section tokens. These are power rules. Now they're not actually balanced because the power cost for um, Justin is nine because he has Bloodstalker, Marksman, Natural Grace, and Speed Demon. So Bloodstalker means that he's minus one to hit against a single enemy and because we're doing a duel here, this is gonna be incredibly powerful. Um, and then Marksman meaning that he um, can make aim shots as if he's using a targeting computer and can only fire one weapon. So if he wants to make an aim shot, one of his guns fires, so his AC-10, and he can shoot to the head if he wants. Uh, the Natural Grace, uh, it's not going to apply really here, moving through any of this terrain, but he could torso twist two hexes if he wants. And then Speed Demon, he can add one movement point to running and two to sprinting, but can't fire during those turns. Gray is less expensive, pilot abilities wise. He has Combat Intuition. Declare the use during the end phase. This pilot takes one point of damage, no consciousness roll, and select the opposing unit. After initiative on the following turn, you can choose one. The unit can perform all movement, weapon, and physical attacks in that order against its target at any point before the target moves. The target has no movement modifiers, but it's not immobile. And this may not make further attacks later on in the turn. All normal modifiers to attacks apply, or the unit moves after all the other units are declared and it fires last. So like, you just get the jump, and then you have all of your weapon range modifiers. So plus one for medium, plus two for long, and plus three for extreme. I just get to go before you seems real good. Um, and there's no pilot damage in this anyway, uh, because obviously there's no pilot, there's no internal structure here. Um, because we're using the core rules in here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore Bloodstalker because uh, it's a duel anyway, and I'll ignore um, Combat Intuition because they seem like the two most powerful, and I'll just keep the rest, and that should balance out. Although um, the uh, story of Great Noten didn't have him be a particularly loyal Lyran, uh, Justin Zhang Allard is a Davian and was actually quite... Uh, uh, outspoken against them until it was revealed he was secret agent uh, and became like a head of the intelligence service. So um, we'll use these stable rules for the two of them, meaning that the Lyran affiliation, the Overlord stable for uh, Gray, allows him to get a minus one to hit up close and a plus one to hit at long range. Uh, the medium range stays the same, but basically it means he's an up close brawler. And then Justin has Starlight stables for House Davian. Uh, Any time he moves over three uh, movement points during a turn, he's plus one to hit. So he's just he's zippy fast and gets out of the way. Our stadium itself, you can see here, um, has some mobile terrain that came in the box set that I've placed down, but also has all these tokens to show if a wall is raised or lowered. Um, each character will roll a d6 at the start of the turn, and sorry, the end of the combat phase, 
um, and before the game starts, see which ones are actually raised. And if we roll the same number, then nothing moves. <laughs> All sections are totally impassable, and if a, um, a uh, model is on one, their opponent gets to place them in an adjacent hex when it raises to just show them getting pushed out of the way. So both Beck Warriors taking an opposite, um, it's these three hexes are the entry points uh, along both short edges, uh, and we'll start the game. And remember, there are no rules for heat or criticals in the box. We're gonna go until one side loses either their torso or head, um, and with called shots possible for uh, for Justin over here, that might be a quick game. Let's see which of these are raised at the start of the game. It's gonna be a three and a four. So these go to raised, which means the central pieces are up. And of course, this can change raising or lowering over the course of the game. I want initiative. Rolling for Justin. He gets a three, and Gray gets a 10, putting the initiative firmly with him. It's time to run. Uh, he can run seven, and there's plenty to get in between him and uh, Gray. So going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Put some training between the two of them, and a wall. We move a total of one, two, three, four, five hexes. It's going to give him a TMO of two, and a run. Oh, and sorry, he can, yeah, and he's moving seven because he has a running of six and he has speed demon. Include his um, house bonus, or not his house bonus, his stable bonus uh, for Starlight Stables into his TMM here, which is an additional plus one because he moved at least three M. It's time for Gray to move. He's going to go his four. So going one, two, three, four, allowing him a bit of line of fire here. Give him a TMM of one. All right, uh, weapon phase. Let's see who is going first. It's going to be um, the loser of the initiative that fires first, which means um, we'll have to go first with Justin. He's got an AC-10, an LRM-10, and two medium lasers. Range is currently 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, which puts everything in firmly medium and out of range for the lasers themselves. Remember, there's no heat track in here, so there's no problem with everybody just firing everything. All right, center to center, there is some light terrain in the way, it looks like. Um, so he's going to fire his AC-10. He is skill 1, uh, meaning he needs a 1, and then um, accuracy for the target, or sorry, attacker uh, ran. That's going to be 2, 3. Uh, he'll have four for the TMM of the target, and he's in medium range for five, six. On a six, that's going to be a nine, so it lands. Uh, with the AC-10, that's ten damage to the three, which for this battle mech is its arm. So ten damage, four, six, eight, ten. Shot to the right arm. All right, and that's the LRM-10. That's a six, which will also hit, as it is also in medium range. Cluster table, how many missiles land? Uh, 11, so an 11 on LRM-10 is all 10. So five, the first one lands in the three, which is that same arm, oh my God. So he has already blown off this guy's right arm. So Grace lost his right arm, and then 11, which will be his left arm. So just, just breaking arms. Turn, and that's going to kill a large laser and an AC-5, and a... That's it. About an opening salvo then. So Justin gets to uh, now weather the fire of the rifleman. Two large lasers. Uh, we know we're inside 10, so that's going to be medium range for everything yet again. So we're looking at a much harder to hit. So skill one as well, uh, but then the target modifier is three, which can put him up to four. Uh, five, six for medium range, and then seven because he walked. All right, first large laser. We'll do both of them first on a seven. He lands it. Uh, that's going to be eight points to the ten. Left arm, let's do arm shots. Two, four, six, eight. The second one also on a seven. Nope, misses. Then it's a uh, AC-5, misses, and the other AC-5, woof, also misses. Glancing damage to Justin, but managing to lose his AC-5 in the process. Combat phase, let's see what walls come up and down. It's going to be a six and a four. So the six then becomes raised, and the four becomes lowered. New turn, turn two, roll for initiative. Uh, seven for Justin, and a two. So now Justin has the priority, and Gray has to move first. Well, it's looking like one, two, three, and a pivot for four. We'll give him the best possibility of keeping him in line of fire, but he can sprint seven. So going one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one more for seven. He's gonna maximize his hit potential here. And also because there's no torso twist in this uh, light version of the game, get it on line of fire. Having moved a grand total of one, two, three, four, sorry, one, two, three, four, five hexes, he will have a team of two. Uh, with his bonus ability, it's gonna give him once again a team of three. Be demon. 
and Starlight Stables combined. Oh, and sorry, he was hitting on sevens. I should have mentioned because we were shooting through the light terrain there. Because of his sniper ability, he reduced the um, the media modifier by one. All right, combat phase. Uh, unfortunately, um, we're not going to have any line of fire. I don't think uh, for the right arm is of course destroyed. The left arm, I suppose, could torso twist to the left to have line of fire. We'll just add that rule. Uh, it's not in this core rule book, but more fun to actually have him shoot back. Uh, and he's got zero for range with all these guns because he's in short, but he doesn't have his right arm anymore. So he's only firing the left arm and the medium lasers. So the first left arm shot, uh, he is skill one. He walked for two, uh, plus three for the moon modifiers and then range is zero. So fives to hit lands the first one, which is the, uh, the large laser. Where does it land? Lands in the eight which for the Centurion is going to be his left torso. So three, six, eight. C5 also lands on a five. Uh, and where does it hit? In the three, which in this case is going to be his right arm. So one, two, three, four, five. It's two medium lasers. They are inside short range because they are three away. So on uh, fours, the first one hits for four, five damage to the seven. And that's the center torso. And then the next one also lands in the center torso. Oh man, well, uh, he's got some point blank shots here. Let's see if Justin can finish him off. Uh, he has blown off one of his arms already. So let's see if that AC 10 hits. He's in zero range. Uh, he is skill one. He ran for two, uh, three for two, sorry, four for TMM, but then minus one now because he is in his uh, sweet, sweet short range. That's actually, uh, not that he had any problems hitting. That was actually uh, Gray's ability. Um, it's going to be, no, that's it. <laughs> so it's just one, uh, two for TMM, three, four, cause he ran. Not using his Bloodstalker ability um, or the uh, Comet Intuition cause it's just the, 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 the rules aren't here cause we're not using heat and uh, critical effects. So four is to hit, we'll start with the AC 10. It sure does. And then where does it land? In the six, which is the right torso for 10 damage. Of course, the missiles of this range, as we all know, this is bad for them. Um, he hits on ones, uh, two, three, four, once again, but then the range modifier uh, at three would be minus four again. So, total of eight. He's point blank in arms. He misses. Two medium lasers, both on fours. First one hits, five points to his four. We'll transfer all the way in and finish off the right torso, which will also kill his medium laser there. So all this is gone. Second one hits as well on a four. And where does it land? In the eight, which will hit him in the left torso for five. Combat phase, wall's going up. A six and a two. So this is gonna flip to lowered. And now this is gonna flip to raised. And Justin uh, gets to get flipped off of it. And Gray can put him in adjacent hex. He's gonna put him over here. I himself a turn to get away. He's now jacked up. So initiative roll, it's gonna be a seven. And that's for Justin. For Gray, he gets a four. So Justin has to move first. Gets the initiative and Gray actually has to move first. Sprint and get the hell out of here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, I think. There, and just move. Give him a TMM of, he moved five hexes, so two. And this wall is completely impassable, so there's nowhere to get away right now, uh, and no good way to get around it. So we're gonna, I think, run, and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, seven, and try and get around it. Shooting the combat phase, turn three, so let's roll again to see what walls come up and down. Six and six, and nothing happens. It's turn four, rolling for initiative. For Justin, a six. For Gray, a six, so rolling off again. A five, and a nine. So winning the initiative, that means the century has to go first. Running again, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or six, seven. Gives him a nice broad line of fire. Cannot escape. So instead going one, two, three, four, and hoping this wall doesn't come up. But he barely moved, so he's teaming zero. Justin shooting first uh, and best. 
and still having a team of three with his run. That AC-10, slamming home again into gray. Uh, this will be on a one, two, three, because he ran. Uh, no TMM, but he is within one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's gonna be medium range for the AC-10, but short for the LRM, bad short. Uh, so that's going to be one, two, three, because he ran, nothing for TMM, and then four, five for his um, medium range. So the AC-10 hits. Where does it land? On a three. It's still transferring, blowing off the side of him. So that's going to be two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the LRM, uh, one worse. It's in short range, uh, but its short range is seven. So because of the negative modifier, because it's an LRM, that's going to be uh, one for his skill, two, three, because he ran, zero for TMM, but then within one range, so four. Cranks it. Three missiles land from the LRM. That's an eight out of 10 missiles. Uh, six. Five damage lands in the four. Once again, uh, this is just gonna keep on transferring. So one, two, three, four, five. Last point lands in the oh, two, which is the center torso. Shooting back. He's got very little left, but he is a sniper. So the medium range stuff doesn't, uh, it doesn't hurt him so bad. And he's within six. So the large laser, uh, it's in sh uh, medium. So that's going to be one, uh, two because he walked and then three, four, five for TMM, six for range because of his sniper ability. So on a six, large laser lands. Where does it hit? Seven center torso. Oh, this is bad. I think this got him. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bang! Central is down, and the legend killer manages to kill Justin when it's all said and done. We'll resolve the rest of his weapons just to see how it goes, but his gambit pays off. Uh, the AC5, uh, short range, so hitting and landing in the head. Oh my god. It was just an absolute laying in wait slobber knocker. Uh, that last medium laser, also in medium, hits and lands in the, say head. Now nah, it's a seven. So center torso again, which means it blows him up completely. So that's it. The legend killer activating his, uh, I only have one arm left. And so now I'm gonna lure you into a false sense of security, the centurion running around the corner and uh, Gray Noten taking down Justin Allard. It was fun. Obviously, I think what we should do is we should do some uh, some stable rules, have some folks paint up their uh, favorite pro wrestler style battle mech and play some actual classic battle mech on this. So I'm gonna talk to Jay, I'm gonna talk to Chris and Chase. If we each do one of the characters from this or make up our own pro wrestling characters, we each pick a stable um, and start off maybe just by tonnage using full battle mech rules and playing in Slayer 7. What I'd like to do is um, make some actual walls for this so you guys can visualize it a bit better. And we'll make, um, we'll use this same map, but like full on 3D the terrain. Uh, maybe I can even get the guys at Death Ray to make like some accessory walls for this so that we can have like a, uh, a stadium visual. And we'll do some Solaris 7 stable stuff. You guys can cheer on your, your favorite battle mech mech warriors, make up some characters and uh, and do some more fun games. This. this feels like a great party game. Obviously the introductory set um, doesn't come with the full rules, but this is like, this is a great like show up to the table and just play with your favorite battle mech at a certain tonnage sort of a game. And I feel like this is the game will shine in this way. We could even do like heals and and uh, stuff like that by having a set like initial skill level for everybody, and then creating special power abilities and having like a budget for buying that stuff. So lots of potential here. Love this map. This is super fun um, and well worth grabbing just for the. 20 bucks that it costs to target. The box did also come with a $20 gift voucher for the web store. So if you want to pick up a Lance pack for extra shenanigans um, to expand this little like arena mech combat game, then yeah, you got that too. So you go, a look at the Solera 7 Steiner Stadium uh, map and of course it's special rules as I did a Let's Play on the Battletech Essentials box. I'm excited about this box. I think it's cool that um, there's like a sort of more fun in games, like accessory and, and expansion for Battletech now where we can play some sort of goofy stuff. And I can see my Battletech friends, Les, uh, Jay, and of course Chase enjoying doing some like multiplayer arena combat with full mech sheets. So I'm gonna try and put that together in the future now that we've checked out the rules um, and use like the full Battletech experience for it too, tracking heat and everything like that with a certain weight class. And uh, I don't know, Jay will probably show up in a luchador mask. <laughs> It'll be fun, it'll be zany, and it looks like a great way to multiplay some Battletech. So big thanks for watching, we'll see you for more Battletech in the future. Till then I'm Ash. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. There are tons of other games already recorded for you to watch. Click over to my channel page if you haven't already, and have a look through the dozens of playlists full of videos. I guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before. I put out new videos seven days a week, and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. 
Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continuing to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Death Ray Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements like Last Days, Game of Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching, it really does help out, and happy gaming.